Moving forward. I want to propose an idea uh, and a, a field of, of, of thinking that has been on my mind for a while. I want to talk about what I would call mobility design. I'm not claiming it actually is out there existing, but I'm sort of proposing it as a way of thinking about um, partly the practices we study as mobility scholars, but also how we can learn things from the design fields in a more general term. Um, my basic argument is that by engaging with design in relation to the way designers and architects think and practices their art, mobility research will actually gain an immense level of knowledge um, relevant to understand deeper the mobilities uh, in spaces and technologies, artifacts, uh, and how ultimately human bodies in, inhabit these sorts of spaces. Now, if we start by thinking about the word design, there's a lot of definitions. Um, you can go to the dictionaries and find that it means mark out or designate or take something apart, shape it without having it in front of you. It's an imaginary practice. It's related to a construction mentally before physically, if there even is a physical object. Um, I've been working with urban design for quite a while, so my interest and my inspiration and source of inspiration is within urban design. And the American urban designer and scholar Kevin Lynch, he offered this definition, and I will quote him. He says, quote, Design is the playful creation and strict evaluation of possible forms of something, including how it's to be made. That something needs not to be a physical object, nor is design expressed only in drawings. Although attempts have been made to reduce design to completely explicit systems of certs and synthesis, it remains an art. It remains a peculiar mix of rationality and irrationality. Design deals with qualities, with complex connections, but also with ambiguities." Unquote. Kevin Lynch wrote this in 1980 in a book on how to design cities. And of course, you can think of many other ways of engaging with the design question. But I think the peculiar mix of rationality and irrationality is actually really interesting and helpful. So we're dealing with a, a field of practice that shapes the condition of our lives, that shapes the places where mobility actually is being practiced, practiced that actually construct the stages upon which we are mobile subjects. So I think we should pay attention to some of the lessons to be learned from that field. Now I'm not suggesting that designers have it all right. Um, there's a beautiful quote by uh, Brian Lawson, an English um, architect and psychologist, who says that uh, the idea that people will walk where the hard landscape goes is so silly that one wonders how designers become so detached from reality. So of course designers have all sorts of imaginaries that are less helpful to people in the real world. But having said that, I think looking at design practices, the way designers engage with shaping the conditions for mobility is, is really something that we can learn a lot from. Also, um, I think we could maybe consider mobility design as a new material turn within the mobility research. In a sense, and I'm talking about material as a very sort of um, sensorial, physical dimension. I'm interested in the embodied performances as people perform mobility. And part of that is related to affect, to the way we sense, to the way we engage with the materiality. Now that can be anything from a a book or a door handle that we open into a train compartment if we have such old things or if they open just by our proxy of proximity of our bodies because of sensor technologies to how we sense the slope of the street, you know, the pavement, the asphalt, the cobblestones versus other types of pavement. So I think those sensibilities to the materialities of the physical environment are being described and a vocabulary has been developed within architecture and design that is much more fine-grained and sophisticated than the one we actually have in mobility research. So why not learn from these people? Why not learn from the practices and the way they engage with it?
in this thinking, I've been quite influenced by uh, Tim Ingold, who talks about a shift from materiality to materials. And I think he's onto something here. And what I like about this is I'm, I'm actually thinking of stuff and how it shapes situations of mobility. So I propose we need a new mobility analysis where the design and the politics of stuff becomes part of our, our work, becomes part of what we're looking at. I think the two points about engaging with design uh, that, uh, that is worth mention. First, the obvious, I think. We get closer to the materiality of these sites of mobility. Um, and second, I think that the work mode of designers, the way they think, the way they engage with the practice is often very different from the standard academic practice in social science and mobility research. And actually, even though we share commonalities, I think research is a creative practice, right? I think sometimes we could learn even more from the designers. Like, for instance, asking uh, the what if question, you know, the imaginary question, stretching our minds, exploring what would happen if so and so. And I think designers often do that, uh, either by drawings and sketchings or modelings or whatever, they try to imagine what this could be. And actually this is pretty close to what could be relevant for policy making. You know, how do you imagine a future? How do you envision the practices potential or the practices you want to encourage in a city uh, of various kinds? How do you nudge or encourage or afford people to do certain things? I think if you, if you explore that imaginary space first, I think you actually have some potential there. Mobility's design, I would argue, asks a pretty straightforward and very pragmatic question. It would simply ask, in prolongation of the state in mobility's perspective that I'm advocating, uh, the question, what makes mobile situations possible? What creates the affordances or the blockings of particular practices? And when I'm asking what, you could ask a lot of things, right? You could ask, what are the regulatory frameworks? What is the policy frame? What is the, you know, the, 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 the national law and stuff like that? Um, which, granted, are important to life on the ground. But you could also ask it in a much more material sense. Now, what makes driving your car fast here possible? Well, you know, the cars, obviously, but also the speed limit to a certain extent, even though it doesn't control the whole thing, but also the paving the way the street slopes, the way it interacts with the physical environment, the way it's been mediated by the design decisions. Um, now, interestingly, I think a lot of those people or practices coming out of um, you know, shaping our environment are not made by people who con concern or think themselves as designers. You know, like if you have nine seconds to cross for green versus 10 seconds to cross for green in a city as a pedestrian, you know, that is a piece of code made by an engineer somewhere, right? I think that's part of designing the situation. That is what affords and affects the situation. So the pragmatic question or the answer would be, is it relevant to include? Yes, it is, because it shapes the conditions, right? To me, looking at mobility design means a number of things. I think we could actually use this to discuss how do we make our mobility systems more inclusive? How do we make them more environmental, environmentally restraining? How do we make them more resilient, risk averse and flexible, less vulnerable? But we could also ask the kinds of questions that designers often do. How do these spaces become more interesting? How do, be, how do they become fun? How, do they become, how will they afford social interaction and engagement between people in the public that might not engage if they were just minding their own business? So I think these are the potentials within a, pro, a, a, um, um, a, a program of researching mobility design, so to speak. The impact or the implication of this is both in theories and methods and disciplinary input, of course. I think in, in line with what I think in general, there is no particular single discipline that can organize all this. So I think the designers on themselves would never apply the mobility research concepts. They would never take the theoretical reflection to this level that we are working with. So I think there's a two-way two interaction here. Um, but I think the potential in looking at the materialities of mobilities, as I would like to call them, from the point of view of mobilities design, is promising. Um, there are creative ways of thinking about engaging with the city and understanding the city and mobility. So I think the benefits from a mobilities design 
uh, research agenda affects both the theoretical and the methodological and also the disciplinary concepts and thinking. Um, I do not think we have one discipline that can take care of all this. I don't think there's only one methodology either. And I do not believe in one theory only. So I think there's, there's, but there's a scope for interaction here that is not being tested before. And I think looking at design and designers' uh, practices are really uh, potentially very helpful. So to state it briefly, I would say the staging of mobilities materialize within mobilities design. Now let me try to exemplify that a bit. Um, I am teaching uh, in an urban design curriculum and part of what we've been doing for some years is to work with um, design of public spaces in relation to uh, infrastructures. Now this is a model of a space, a site in Copenhagen. And what we're dealing with in this project is student working with the metro and how to understand the relationship between the underworld of the metro and the everyday life public spaces on the surface. Now, interestingly, when we made this project, we talked to an architect planner um, who had been part of planning the metro. And he didn't understand why we were interested in the metro because that was belonging to the metro company and a completely different re legal framework, whereas urban designers work in the urban spaces. And that was really helpful because I could stay, say to my students, now, did you watch that? Did you hear that? Actually, this separation between above and beyond or, or below is not helpful because the mobile subject lives in the whole thing, right? So in this project, we work with how to open up the metro station, how to connect um, to some of the shops over here to cr create a new type of public space and how to use the metro as a facilitator of social interaction and cultural life. It's not just a people's mover, it's also um, something else. So I think that on its own is interesting for me to work with designers on these issues because it challenges my notion, my understanding of what is a city and what will mobilities mean. But also I get a much more sort of technical handle on this because we work in layers, right? So you can actually start understanding the 3D of the city. We all know it with our bodies and our practices, but knowing it with our minds and our concepts is slightly a challenge for some of us at least. So this is where I'm using the model to actually understand the layeredness of this situation. And you can take this model and then you can add to it a very important part, which is not visible here, which is all the digital technologies, all the Wi-Fi, all the apps and stuff that people use to navigate up and through these spaces. So this is just a small example, I think, of, um, of how you can learn stuff from working with designers, but also how you can actually test out some of your concepts and looking towards improving the designer's awareness of the repercussions for life in the systems and the design, but also how we as mobility researchers might develop our theories and our concepts by looking at very tangible physical manifestations of design. Zeit, so wie den Haus,